guys, Richard Older here, and welcome to the channel. Honda B-Series, guys, what is your favorite power adder? Nitrous? A blower? What about a turbo? Well, you're in luck. You don't have to choose. This video has all of them. In this video, we're going to take a look at power adders for the B-Series Honda motor. Starting off with nitrous oxide, we installed a simple and fairly inexpensive wet fogger kit on a B-16. It just shows you how easy and inexpensive it is to add like a big chunk of power to your B-Series. You can add 50, 60, 70 horsepower with just a push of a button, and actually these systems are adjustable, so you can go even beyond that, and many people have. We're going to follow that up with a Vortex supercharger on another B-Series run on the chassis die. Now, now, turbo stuff is very, very common, but the supercharged stuff, less so. Back in the day, Vortec jumped into the sport compact market with blower kits for the 1.6 liter Civic Si and the 1.8 liter Acura Integra. Cool stuff, we're gonna run it at a couple of different boost levels, and actually, we're gonna finish up with what everybody wants, a turbo Honda. In this case, it is a two liter, sub two liter stroker motor that I built for my Bonneville Civic, which allowed the car to go 227 miles an hour. Now, we ran it all the way up to 30 pounds of boost on the engine dyno, but I only ever ran about half that out on the salt. Cool stuff, let's check it out. To get things started on our Honda Power Adders, we're going to start off like we did with the other ones with the Chevys and Fords. We're going to take a look at nitrous. And although nitrous might not be as common with the uh, B-Series Honda stuff, which is what we're running here, although it, may, it might be, I know a lot of guys tend to go with turbos, and obviously we're going to be looking at that. We're also going to be looking at supercharging on the B-Series stuff. So this was a basically stock-ish B-16 that I ran on the dyno at West Tech. It was, it had been modified. Um, it was a stock bottom end. We had ring gap in it. We put, uh, head studs on it and we also milled the head about 30 thousandths. We had adjustable cam sprockets on it, but it had the stock P30 cams in it, a stock unported P30 head, stock pistons and rods and stuff, and added the stock P30 intake and throttle body on it. The one thing that we did do is we did not run the stock exhaust. We ran an Apex I or Apex E. Uh, long tube header. It was originally designed for a, and B pipe. It was originally designed for a type R. It's the header that I found in all of my testing when we ran through about 15 different headers. The one that worked best on this B16, it was the one that I used in the road race car in the Del Sol to actually win the U.S. Touring Car Championship. So the header worked very well. We also had a, a filter on a stick, an RS Akimoto, um, radius entry, uh, air intake basically, which does help power. And we had demonstrated that many, many times. We ran this with uh, Tom that was working at West Tech at the time, did the tuning. He did it with a fast uh, management system. We had 36-pound injectors in this thing and a, an AEM fuel rail. The fuel rail obviously doesn't help power at all. But we did adjust the timing until we kind of optimized the power and the stock combination. Here's what we got before running the nitrous on this thing. The, the naturally aspirated motor made 184.6, so we'll call that 185 horsepower. And in typical VTEC fashion, the torque curve, 131 foot-pounds, but it was above 120 from 5,400 all the way out to 8,000. And you can see, I know all of the VTEC guys are going to say, yeah, you activated your VTEC too late because you got a big jump up. We did. We, we recognize that. We've done this a few times. But here's what happened when we added our nitrous. And all we did was we just drilled and tapped the RS Akimoto air intake and then threaded in a, a, a wet fogger nozzle, so it's injecting nitrous and fuel together. It's from Zex. We ran uh, with jetting to supply like a 75 shot on this, and with a little bit more tuning, I think what was happening is we're, we're either running out of nitrous flow, or we were, um, it might have been a little bit rich. It was 11, five or six out there at the top, and I think we a little more tuning could have got this thing a little bit flatter, but it still did good. Uh, it jumped the peak power up from 185 up to 242, and peak torque was up to 188 foot-pounds. So you can see where we activated it just post VTEC, basically, and then it carried a nice big power gain all the way through, kind of like what you would see with Boost, but Nitrous works very well on a B-Series. Now let's take a look at supercharging. 
Our next test differed from the others in that by the fact that it was run on the chassis dyno and not on the engine dyno. We ran this on the Superflow chassis dyno at West Tech, and we ran it in my yellow 1985 Honda Del Sol SI with the VTEC motor. This was basically a bone stock B16. It did have the same uh, apexy header on it. And it had an RS Akimoto air intake like the engine that we had run on the engine dyno. This one was all stock though, and we didn't have ring gap in it. We didn't mill the head. We didn't have cam sprockets on it. It was basically all stock except for the header and the air intake. And this is kind of typical of what you would expect. Um, and we ran this with the Han data management system. So ours, and, and this might have even been an S100 when we were doing this. So we were having to reprogram the chips on it, but it worked well. And as long as you can, you know, get the air fuel the same and the timing the same, and that's what you want to do when you're doing a comparison. Run, uh, in naturally aspirated trim on the chassis dyno, our B16 produced 146 horsepower. And 111 foot-pounds of torque. You can see, again, fairly flat torque curve. I'm going to have to remove the torque curve because it just gets too busy with all these things. But we'll take a look here. And here's what happened when we added our Vortex supercharger. It was a V5G trim, I believe. And it had an aired water, after-cooler, intercooler. They're, they're clever nomenclature for it. We ran... Uh, water from the faucet through this thing and just and just drained it out back into the thing and this was run at about seven pounds and as you can see uh, i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to get rid of the the torque here for you so that you can, might be able to see this a little bit better we'll just take a look at the horsepower curve you can see there's very little gain down here in the 25,000 or 2500 to 3000 range and that's because well there's two reasons one there's a little bit of boost, but very little bit. And we're already taking timing away because of the seeing the boost there. And so you're not seeing much of a gain there. So the boost gain is really low there. We're only seeing seven pounds out at the very top. So there might only be a half a pound there. This thing really starts to get going post VTEC, which is typical of any of these B-series motors. And it really comes alive out in the 6,500 to 8,000 range. You can see this thing still climbing, wanted to keep running RPM. So the B-series guys that are running RPM, uh, want to go to 8,500 or 9,000, this blower will continue to add boost and continue to add power. And it works very well. But what we did from here is we, we were eventually comparing this to turbocharging and a positive displacement supercharger. But for this video, we'll take a look at what happens when we do what everybody does. We just changed the blower pulley, added more boost, and cranked it up to about 10 pounds, where this thing made over 250, 256 horsepower, and that was up from 231 horsepower. So we picked up a good bit of power and, and the gains, as we would see, since the boost increases with speed, our gains increase with speed also. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with the Vortex. So this thing made over 250 horsepower at the tire, which is good for a little B-Series. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we combine the B-Series VTEC Honda with turbos. Although I have many examples of running turbos on B-series motors, everything from stock and D-series motors as well, everything from stock ones all the way up to modified ones, I wanted to show you something that was modified and something we ran a lot of boost on. And this was a motor that I built for the Bonneville Civic, and we ended up running nowhere near this power level, but we did run it up on the dyno with a very big turbo. We had a 76 millimeter turbo that I borrowed from Mahovitz. It was one of the two turbos that he originally was running on his 4.6 liter that he was making a million horsepower with. So we knew that there was more than the power those turbos would support a lot. I never ran that turbo in the car. We ran a smaller 72 millimeter, which is more than we needed because we only ran about 15 or 16 pounds when we were running out of Bonneville uh, at the highest. And, and that's that's when the car went 226 miles an hour or so. But this was our combination, and it was a sub 2 liter motor to fit in the class. So we had an 84 millimeter bore, an 87.2 millimeter GSR stroke crank. It had a dark CNC ported head. It had was 9.5 to 1. It had comp stage 2 cams in it. It had a Skunk 2 Type R style intake manifold, a board throttle body, a board stock one. We When we ran NA, we ran the RS Akimoto 3-inch uh, inlet and the uh, Apex header on it with a 3-inch exhaust with no muffler, 36-pound injectors, and this thing was tuned using the FAST management system. And run in that configuration, our NA combination, our 
sub two liter 1.9 ish or so made 228 horsepower and 158 foot pounds and here's what happened when we added our big 76 millimeter turbo with a spearco uh, dual core air to water intercooler on it and we had a kind of a long tube header design for the turbo with its big t4 flange on it here's what happened when we ran this thing produced um this was at 17 pounds the thing produced 521 horsepower and you can see everything was still rising because we actually had a rising boost curve too and uh, over 335 foot pounds of torque and here's you know we we just kept going up we kept pushing this thing more and more and Here's what happened when we ran 25.5 pounds. Peak power was 670 and peak torque checked in at 462. I think that there was some more power to be had there. Um, we had the thing started to get rich out of the top, but we weren't trying to tune every last little bit out of it at each boost level. We were just kind of going up and up and up because, you know, with limited available dyno time. And here's what happened when we ran basically our last runs of the day. And that was at 29.8 pounds. This thing made 728 horsepower and over 500 foot pounds of torque, 502 foot pounds of torque. So this thing did very well. And as I said, we never ran it like this out on the salt, but we only ran it at about 16 pounds or 16 and a half pounds or so. And it, and it went 227 miles an hour and did very well. But this is what happens when you add boost to a good B series motor. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, it should come as no surprise that the Honda B-Series is an impressive performer even in stock trim and has a really good cylinder head, it has a really good intake manifold and everything else works very well, even the stock exhaust manifolds and the air intake and all that stuff. But there is power to be had there. You can port the head, you definitely can put different cams in, especially if you're starting out with the P30 with the B16, you can put the Type R stuff or lots and lots of aftermarket stuff. You can get intakes, although it's kind of hard to beat the P30 intake or the Type R intake if you want to make power at a higher engine speed headers obviously always a good idea but you're not going to really add a ton of power unless you put a power adder on it like the nitrous easy 60 70 horsepower you can go way beyond that we could have put jetting it to add another 100 horsepower without any problem the vortex supercharger which is very cool i have a lot of experience with that we ran that on a lot of different combinations we tried different pulleys and different combinations we ended up making a ton of, of horsepower in fact i put my own combination together where we remounted the blower without the jack shaft down near where the air conditioning is i'm going to go ahead and put a photo up here you guys can take a look at that because we were trying to run this thing out of bonneville and it worked very well but what everybody was waiting for obviously was the high horsepower turbo deal now we ran 30 pounds of boost on a modified motor and as we all know a good quality powerful na combination added to boost that's a match made in heaven arbiter holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff i'll keep testing